Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel in the first place. Today we have a Bakugo X listener, it's Late Night Calls by Fiction Please on AO3. The link will be in the description, and let's go ahead and get into it. Where had the day gone? You could have sworn it was just noon, not pitch black outside. Grabbing your phone from wherever you threw it earlier, you saw the missed calls and texts. The notifications took up all the screen, going on for a while. He opened the contact with the least messages. Katsuki, 12.31 p.m. Idiot, you better be eating lunch. None of that skipping meals crap. 6.47 p.m. I swear if you haven't replied because your face is stuck in some schoolwork. You rolled your eyes. No surprise here that he was on you about lunch. Ever since last year, when you ended up fainting after forgetting, he made sure you remembered to eat. Yet, when you tried to think of when you last ate, you realized it never happened. You woke up in the morning, had coffee, and just now, who knows what time, decided to take a break from studying and overdo assignments. Cursing under your breath, you dialed his number. It rang all the way through to his voicemail. Unless you're dead or about to be dead, don't call again. The voicemail's here for a reason. He thought about leaving one, but decided to call again. This time, on the last ring, he picked up. Hey, Katsuki. You laughed, standing up to pace around your room. Listen, I know it's my fault, but I completely forgot to eat, and I really just needed to get things done. Stupid. His voice was low, obviously half asleep. What does this have to do with me? You frowned, as if he was there with you. Oh, I don't know. Maybe after all those threatening texts, I thought it might bring you some comfort. You couldn't help the sarcasm in your words. But after all, he was one of your closest friends. He'd get the point. Whatever, so you gonna eat? You could hear ruffling on his side. The words said after a long yawn. Actually, probably not. I forgot to go to the store this week, and my mom is borrowing the only form of transportation. It, it's all, it's alright though, <laughs> I'll sleep it off. I just called so you know I'm still alive. You rubbed your face, skin turning red from the motion. Yeah, no. He seems more weak now. Don't go to bed, give me 30 minutes. Katsuki, no, you, you don't have to do that, just stay home. You could feel a headache settling in. Don't go to bed, he repeated. One beep and the call was over. He sighed, tossing the phone on your bed. Looking around your room, you realized what a mess it was. Weird seeing how lately all you've been doing is switching from your desk to your bed. Empty food cartons and fruit peels littered your workstation. Drain soda cans and plastic cups kept them company. Dirty pieces of clothes were strewn all over the back of your chair and the bed headboard. You took a deep breath and began picking up. No need to worry Kotsky even more. Separating clean clothes from the dirty, you started a load of laundry. Grabbing a trash bag, you tossed all the containers away, taking the cups to the sink. Right as you were about to start washing them, you heard a knock on the front door. Walking over, you looked into the peephole. A tired-looking Kotsky stood outside. You opened it, letting him set the bags, with thank you written in red on the table. He sat down, sorting the takeout boxes. Alright, I still had to find somewhere that was still open, but I still managed to get your usual. He looked at you, realizing you were at the sink. Hey, eat first. You waved him off. I will, I will, I just need to clean these. Your hands moved under the water, sweat slowly collecting on the sponge. A hand landed on your arm and you jumped, startled. Eat. You zoned out and you're shaking. He nodded to your wet hands. He had a point. When you walked away, he took your spot. Kotsky, my list of debt to you is only growing. You opened one of the boxes. Steaming food met your face. Mouth immediately watering. Suddenly, you weren't so upset at him for forcing you to eat. It's not debt. Don't think too hard about it. He set the dribbling dishes on the drying rack taking a seat across from you soon enough. Mid-chew, you looked up at him, with a fork pointing at him. You are an amazing human being. 
He rolled his eyes, blinking a little too slow. Yeah, I know. He set down the fork. Oh, shoot, you're probably exhausted. While you only had college work to worry about, he was busy all day doing hero work, saving lives and stuff. Go lay down. You nodded to your room. I'm fine. He set his head in his hands, eyes drifting closed. You shook your head. I really am sorry for waking you up. If I knew it was so late, I wouldn't have. Your plate was slowly getting more and more empty. I said don't think too much about this. I'd rather have you call me anyway, even if it means I have to wake up at the insane hours of night. You weren't sure how to interpret his words. He always expressed his distaste of having people rely on him, how it got on his nerves, made him annoyed, and yet... Well, thank you. I'll try not to make it a regular thing. <laughs> he laughed, thinking of having takeout every night at 3am. Good. Even if you are busy with school, you really need to eat. He was getting drowsier by the second, but everything he said was said with emphasis. You replied under your breath, I will, but just for you. He heard you, but didn't react. His heart was beating too fast, face flushing too red. Over the years, he developed a liking to you, a stupid liking that grew with each stupid thing you said from those stupid lips of yours. He hated how much of you he noticed, the way you said his name, the way you messed with your ears when you were anxious. The way you gasped for breath with each laugh, like you sent a piece of you with each one. The way your fingers were always tapping to an invisible song, a song he too wanted to hear. Hey, are you okay? You look kind of hot. You raised a hand, correcting yourself. I mean, like, heated, red. You're not sick, are you? Great, now you're both blushing. Yeah, I'll be right back. He stood up, walking to the bathroom. Locking the door behind him, he stared at his reflection in the mirror above your sink. His eyes caught onto an orange post-it note at the bottom corner of the glass. It was one he gave to you a couple weeks ago. He left it on your door when he came by and you weren't home. All it said was, be here next time, stupid. His tiny K scribbled under it. Why did you keep it? On top of that, why was it on your mirror, where you'd see it every day? You were still sitting at the table, taking a last bite. You hoped he was alright, not ready for guilt to take over. He did this because he cared, not because he felt obligated, right? He came out, skin less pale and eyes brighter. You threw away your trash and turned to him. Wanna watch TV? He shrugged and followed you to your room. You jumped onto your freshly made bed slightly thinking, past listener. He had laid down on the other side, arm under his head. You grabbed the remote and started playing the show you were in the middle of. You leaned back, melting into the mattress. It shouldn't have been a surprise when both of you knocked out. Or when you woke up the next morning, limbs somehow tangled. It always managed to happen when he slept over. This time was different though. This time, Neither of you pulled away. Alright, that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, whatever. Goodbye!